Hi everyone, this is a quick look at the S1000. It's a 2019 model. Um, I've just done this video really because I was looking on uh, YouTube for some more information on the bike really. Um, before reading reviews and just seeing if it had anything on it that I was missing from the internet really. I uh, didn't know much about it for a while. Did as much research as I could. And turns out even the BMW dealer I brought it from didn't know that much about the bike to be honest. But it's a cracking machine. This is my second one now. Uh, this is the M Sport. So this is a X Demo one. So 2,000 miles and 17,000 pounds. It's not bad really, because it's a 20 odd thousand pound bike new. Um, all I've done is put a tail tidy on. Uh, took about 25 minutes. Pretty easy really. Um, just take the cover off. These panels all come out, two bolts, and then they just unclip. There's a plug here. Same on this side, two plugs, a few cable ties. Everything comes out and I've kept the kept the original light and the original LED for the number plates. Stops any alarms coming. Also fitted this Aki. Got this second hand as well on eBay, 400 quid. There's a lovely cam, looks the part. I think suits this bike really well. The, the bloody cat on this thing, it, it's, it really isn't a very loud bike at all. With the standard exhaust, it's very quiet. Uh, with the Aki, it's a bit more meaty, but still, I'd prefer it to be a bit loud. I can hear the uh, tappet noise uh, over the exhaust sometimes. Shouldn't be that way of a sports bike like this. But anyway, M Sport. This is the one you want to go for, really. Um, you can sit for hours. I did for many weeks, spending time adding all the bits I wanted on to my bike. Um, in the end, I was pretty much up to the same price as buying an M Sport. Um, I wanted everything. You know, I didn't... Because I had the previous generation, I wanted more really than what I had on my old bike. Um, I had a bit of problems with my old S1000. A lot of it was uh, quality, really. The switch gear and the, uh, the ignition died. I had the foot switch died. Yeah, it was quite a few things. But um, hopefully this one, they've sorted it all out now. So I'll quickly go through. I mean, the point of this video really is to talk about the actual bike itself and what it's got. Um, I think most people have probably read up about it themselves. And they know themselves now, but... This thing's got a bit more than any other bike, I would say, and it really, for the price that you pay, it is a stunning bit of kit. And I'll start with the quick shifter, obviously. They've had this now since, what, 2008? Uh, but this has got the auto blipper, and the, so it's a clutchless up change and clutchless down change. I find the down change at the moment pig awful. I'm not sure if it's just me not used to it, if I've been too rough, no idea. I quite often doesn't want to change what I want it to change. Um, I'll just get used to the bike, I think. I'm going to take it out a bit longer. Um, probably be a bit softer with the gear change, and hopefully that should cure that. Now, this thing's got everything on it. So, the M Sport comes with a lift your mind battery, which I say is lighter, obviously, and lasts six times as long. It comes with the carbon wheels, which are, which are lovely. Very nice. The brakes are five mil thicker. Um, apart from that, uh, everything else is the optional extra, but this thing, because it's the M Sport, it, it, everything just comes with it. So everything now, you can pretty much spec a, a bog standard S1000 and you can add them on too. So heated grips, I think it's a 225 option, quite nice. Um, the SOS button is something I really wanted. Um, only I've had them in cars before and it's quite handy because the bike's equipped with quite a few sensors. So. You don't have to lift the flap and push the button if you've had a crash. It it knows and you'll get a phone call. And on the back of the TFT's display here, there's a speaker. Someone on the phone to speak to you. If you don't respond, they'll send the emergency services. So if you're out on your own without your mates um, and you have a crash, then someone should come. Now this comes with the electronic suspension. Uh, standard with this model. But uh, if you go in for the standard bike, then it's not. That's 1,200 quid. You can change the settings. I think there's 14 different settings. One being the softest, 14 being the hardest. I haven't experimented enough of that yet. So I can't tell you too much about it. Uh, so you've got cruise control. Uh, you've got uh, multi the media system. I'll go through that in a minute. Um, the controls are pretty straightforward actually. Indicators and horn and, and flash are in the same place as the old one. This has got hill start, which you can set off automatically or manually. Um, it's got a very clever ABS system, anti-wheelie system, and it's got launch control and a pit lane limiter. 
Now both the launch control and pin lane limiter are controlled by this button. Um, I'll explain a bit more in a minute. Uh, I can't launch it in the garage, um, obvious reasons. Uh, also this thing comes with its own alarm, which is nice because it's all built into the fob. So you don't have to carry around a data tool bipper on the back of it. And it, I think it's a much better system. Now, the display is lovely. Um, I'll explain a few things about it, what I know. I don't know as much because I've only had, had the bike about three days. So, first of all, fuel gauge, never had that on the old one. And it's a thirsty girl. Uh, half a tank, doing about 40 miles. So, full tank, probably 80, 80 miles. I'm doing about 10 miles to the gallon at the moment. Um, so, she's, she's, she is thirsty. You can flip, so if you see these arrows here, that means you can go down, so you use the menu button. As, as I'll show here, so you go down and then you've got extra displays. So here you've got a few extras as well. I don't know if you can see the arrow on the side there. That means you can go across using the hand, uh, hand wheel here. You slide across, you've got a lap timer. So you can set your, you know, you can track this thing and you can keep an eye on the laps so you can reset everything. It stores everything. Nice bit of kit light. Um, also the bike comes with an app. Now I've, I've downloaded the app, but I haven't got used to it yet. You can, the app saves everything. It can, it will save the journey you've done, the speed, the lean angle, blah, blah, blah. It will save everything. Also, you can set up on your phone a destination and then it will send it to the bike. It's quite clever, sort of like a car, I suppose. Also, it's got a lean angle here, which will tell you your max lean angle and it will reset every time you start the bike up. So you can see how far you've done it over in the race or what, if you've just been out for a cruise. Like I said, it's got built-in navigation. I think you need the app uh, to use it. I've only used it briefly. It doesn't bring up a map like a car sat nav or Tom Tom. It just brings up an arrow, left, right, left, right, straight on, 300 yards, so on and so forth. And then it links by Bluetooth to your heads, to your helmet headset. Um, and also you can get your passenger helmet headset connected to this. You connect everything to this. You don't connect to your phone. You connect everything to the, the, the system. You can play your music, uh, you can phone people, obviously. And then we get to the bit that I quite like the settings. Now, this has got the Race Pro. Um, it's a standard on the M Sport, I think. But again, you can add it if you want to a standard bike. Now, it's something I've never seen on a bike before, but you know, if you scroll down on the configuration, you can basically choose what you want to have. Um, what you, you can sort of adapt the bike to your riding style. You've got three different modes, one, two, three. You can save, you know, you can have that as, as your rain, as your, as your road, as your track, whatever you want. You can, the end, uh, this is the throttle response, how much engine braking you have, how much traction control, how much anti-wheelie, and how much ABS. Now, I haven't had enough time on this thing to explain, or explore, sorry, how much difference everything makes. Um, for example, if we go into Race Pro 1, I've got this set at the moment, throttle response and throttle acoustics. Now, uh, same as my old S1000, it, it does it does burble as you come down the hill, which you know I think it should do, and it sounds lovely. Um, you can adjust that. So if we go into this setting here, we can go all the way up to say rain, for example, soft throttle response and reduce torque. It's pretty obvious. Old bike did the same, but I like the way you can choose however you want it. It's not just a setting. You can change engine braking, traction control, and the wheelie behavior. Here, I, before, I've never seen this either really. You can you can change how you want it. You can have a have max stability, um, slight wheelies, high wheelies, or turn it off completely. Now, uh, I've not tried it enough. I don't know how high the high wheelie will, will take you. I don't know really. I mean, I've had it kick in a f quite a lot just in, in, in mode two. I have not had the front wheel up very high before it kicks in. So I'm going to try it next time I go out, uh, see if I can see how high it goes up before it actually intervenes. ABS, again, I don't know enough about how much of a difference. I've anked on the brakes of this thing at high speed and it squirms all over the road, just like my old bike did. And I don't, I don't know yet enough. I haven't gone through all my settings and seen if Setting number one, for example, uh, which is basically a track, is 
something I'd prefer to having the ABS Pro on and the anti rear lift on. Now, one thing about the S1000 is you touch the front brake, it also does the rear brake. Um, so it, it's all integrated. Uh, you can turn that off if, if we go to one. You can see now that the rear brake is completely separate. Um, I suppose if you're on a track, that's where you're going to be anyway. But for the road, for the moment, I'm keeping it on this until I know a bit more about it. DDC, this is uh, this is electronic suspension. Like I say, comes standard at six. I don't know yet enough to tell you if it's any better or any worse, and how I how I prefer it. Now, I have the country roads, so I imagine I might be coming down to five. See if that feels any better. Um, but yes, yeah, a lovely bit of, I like this, because what you can do is while you're driving, same as the old one, if you change the mode, you can go all through the race. And, you can, and it, I think it's a very, very nice bit of kit. So you've got pit lane limiter. Now this is something that I didn't know much about because even the guy at BMW had no idea he even had it. Um, this is not a speed limiter, but a rev limiter. So you configure it by setting the revs. Now I think that's about 30 mile an hour, I haven't tried yet. And you engage it, you have to be in first gear and you hold down the start button while you're driving in first gear. Now, I've tried, I've tried it briefly, I was doing 24 mile an hour. As soon as you let go of that button, as soon as you let go, and if you've got too much of that, it's, up, up we go. <laughs> it just goes from zero to hero like. So yeah, it's a good bit of kit, but you've got to hold onto the button and make sure that the throttle's off when you let go, really. Otherwise, you you'll be doing a wheelie. Now, launch control is done the same. There's no setting for that, but you can bring the bike into first gear, hold down the button, and you wait, and you get a white light appear on the top of the screen. Then you rev it, and it bounces it off about 8,000 revs. Let go of the clutch, that's simple, nice and easy. Um, I don't know how many goes you'll get before the clutch overheats. I think it keeps a counter and it will make you cool the bike down. So it won't let you destroy the clutch. But again, I need to do a bit more research. I don't know how, how much damage you're doing to the clutch by launching it. And I don't know how much time um, you're actually saving. You know, it might be just as quick doing it off the clutch and pulling away. I, I, it's a nice feature just to be just to be a kid like but and i have used it already and uh it, it does feel quite savage um so yeah that's a pretty much about that's this the display unit again you come up to the top and you get this is like the standard standard uh i, d I like it the revs you know the num the numbers actually highlight as the engine uh, as you as you as the engine revs and the speedo is quite big so you can actually see it it's pretty quick and it, it i think it's pretty accurate um the gear changed up i said it's seamless uh, i've got no no problems with it my old one was very jerky when it's cold and it didn't like low rev um quick shifts uh this thing is fine it's still for the downshift i'm getting used to now everywhere else i mean i'll I took like, this on standard pressures from BMW and it was shocking. Um, I had to drop the drop the uh, the rear wheel, that's for sure, because it was 47 PSI by the time you blast it around a bit. But this has got tire pressure sensors and everything, so you can you can see what's going on. You can map basically your whole. You, you, it's like a car. I can't really, uh, I can't really say it's bad at all. It's very very nice. Servicing again is, is annual, it's about the same as the S1, the old one. Like, there's nothing, nothing major there. Um, cruise control, I haven't used it yet. You just set it on and reset like that, and so it's just it's exactly the same as I suppose a car. And I think that's pretty much all I can describe to you from the toys on the dashboard. Um, now I will say it's. I've said already it's a bit thirsty and I've said already I'm not too sure about the blipper but the rest of the bike is beautiful. I think this one comes standard with the Michelin's. I have seen the others with the Metzler's. Now I don't know if the Metzler's, I think you have to have the pillion pack to get them. I don't know why um, but 
if you go for the M Sport without the pillion pack and the cowl, which is a standard feature on this one. Um, obviously you don't have the pegs or anything like that, but you get the Michelin tires. At least these seem fine to me. Like um, I've only been out a few times on them, so I'm just getting used to the bike. Apart from that, she is a stunning bit of kit. And uh, yeah, I recommend everyone have a go on one, definitely. <laughs>